You see squirrels every day, walking down the street, in your front yard, running across a back road. No matter the situation, it is inevitable to run into wildlife. Some people may enjoy it and choose to spend their time tending to the animals, such as feeding birds at the park or on a rare occasion feeding the squirrels. However, some may disagree when it comes to enjoyment of wildlife. California ground squirrels are the leading vertebrate pest in California and has farmers pulling their hair. Their damage restricts farmers from achieving their maximum yield and quality, increasing costs for repairs and management, which is ultimately an inconvenience. They also pose a threat to human, human health because of their capabilities to carry diseases such as vaponic plague, tularemia, for example. Due to this management, it is key to ensuring ground squirrels populations are under control and kept underneath economic thresholds. So how do you know if you've encountered a California ground squirrel? There are multiple species of ground squirrel in California. The two most commonly known to cause significant damage to agriculture are the California ground squirrel and the Belding ground squirrel. So what's the difference between the two? The Belding ground squirrel's scientific name is Eurocetellus belgini. They reside mainly in Northern California and not commonly in the San Luis Obispo area. They're about eight to nine inches long and have about a three inch tail length. They have no stripes or markings and are brownish gray to reddish brown throughout and they're relatively small. Kingdom, Mammalia, Phylum, Cordota, Class, Mammalia, Order, Rodentia, Family, Scuridae, Genus, Autospermophilus, Species, Beachia. It is fairly easy to identify ground squirrels. Their body measures 14 to 20 inches, which includes their tail. Adult squirrels weigh between 21 and 30 ounces. The males are somewhat larger than the females. Ground squirrel's fur is brown with some white and gray marking on the back. Their belly and underside have a combination of lighter brown, grays, and white. California ground squirrel have a white ring around each eye. Their tails are somewhat bushy, but less so than those of, of a tree squirrel. And their ears are erect and conspicuous. The California ground squirrel is found throughout most of California and extends south into the northwestern part of the Baja Peninsula. It is also found in western Nevada and can be found north of the Columbia River in south central Washington and throughout western Oregon. The California ground squirrel can invade and colonize residential areas that have open, grassy areas, sometimes causing considerable damage. Although California ground squirrel populations generally thrive where winters are mild, there are known populations in the central Sierra Nevada mountains at altitudes at, of over 7,000 feet. California ground squirrels are a non-game mammal meaning that they can be legally trapped or killed at any time as long as there's associated damage. However, California ground squirrels are also commonly mistaken for the western gray squirrel. Here are a couple of the key identification differences to ensure that your management of ground squirrels is legal. The western gray squirrel are not a ground squirrel species. However, since they may live in the same habitats, they're commonly mistaken to be one. They're gray throughout, have a bushier tail, and reside in trees rather than holes in the ground. It's important to be able to tell the difference between the two because the western gray squirrel is illegal to trap since it is classified as a fur-bearing mammal in California. What are the signs of the California ground squirrel? California ground squirrels have burrow systems in which they habitate in. If there are no spider webs or foliage debris in the opening, that can signify the system has been active or the squirrel has been in there recently. You also know a ground squirrel is responsible for your crop damage if your fruit and vegetables begin to look a little something like this. Squirrel feeding damage is identifiable by the appearance of teeth marks. 
You can also assume a ground squirrel is active by the girdling that's present on trees and by their droppings as well. California ground squirrel habitat. They're widespread throughout almost all habitats and early successional stages. A description from Vermont NRCS states, habitats with vigorously growing grasses, forbs, shrubs, and trees, which provide excellent food and cover for wildlife, but need disturbance to be maintained. Examples of early successional habitats include weedy areas, grasslands, old fields or pastures, shrub thickets, and young forests. Ground squirrels can be commonly found in open and disturbed areas, especially on roadsides, open croplands, and grazed meadows. They prefer open habitats with rocks, scattered trees, logs, and other ground cover. Ground squirrels are primarily herbivores, but will also eat insects, bird, egg, bird eggs, and some fungi. Their diet changes with the season after emerging from hibernation, they feed almost exclusively on green grasses and herbaceous plants. When annual plants begin to dry and produce seed, squirrels switch to seeds, grains, and nuts and begin to soar for food. They also feed on high value crops like avocados, pistachios, and walnuts. They typically forage close to the burrows and their home range typically is within a 75 yard radius of their burrow. California ground squirrels live in colonial burrow systems where they sleep, rest, take care of young, store food, and avoid danger. Their burrows are about four inches in diameter, although older burrows entrances can be a bit larger. The length of a burrow system usually ranges between 5 and 30 feet. Most burrow systems are within 2 to 3 feet of the surface of the ground, but they may occasionally be up to 6 feet or more in depth. Burrows can be single tunnel or complex branching systems. They may, they may be occupied by a single squirrel or occupied by many. California ground squirrels are active during the day, mainly from mid-morning through late afternoon, especially on warm, sunny days. They have two periods of dormancy during the year. During winter months, most ground squirrels hibernate, but some young can be active at this time, especially in areas where winters aren't severe. During the hottest time of the year, most adults go into a period of inactivity called estivation that can last a few days to a week or more. During these periods, the burrows appear open at the entrance, but the squirrel plugs it with soil near the nest. The onset of breeding in California ground squirrels populations can vary depending on weather, elevation, and latitude. Generally, populations at higher altitudes and in colder climates hibernate for longer periods and therefore breed later. Mating can start as early as January in warmer locations and continue until July. Peak mating occurs from March through June. California ground squirrels only produce a single litter per year. The average litter has five to eight young, but litter, litters as small as one and as large as 15 have been observed. The young are born in the burrow and grow rapidly, emerging from the burrow when they are six weeks old. At six months of age, they resemble adults. Damage. California ground squirrels are responsible for major damage throughout the state. They easily climb on trees and vines and feed on fruit and nuts from set to maturity all the way through harvest. Adult ground squirrels often take seeds and nuts into their burrows, especially in the late summer and early fall. During this period, crop losses greatly exceed the amount the ground squirrels have consumed. Ground squirrels are also consume vegetated crops and berries. 
They also like to gnaw on fruit and bark, grow trunks, which can lead to the death of the trees or vines in a relatively short time. They also damage roots, in the, enabling secondary pathogen infections. They also chew on plastic irrigation lines as seen in the picture. Overall, this squirrel has caused an estimated 30 to 50 million dollars worth of agricultural damage in California alone. When digging burrows, ground squirrels bring soil and rock to the surface and deposit in mounds near burrow openings. They enlarge burrow systems each year by constructing new tunnels and creating more entrances. So the longer the ground squirrel occupies the burrow, the more the extensive it becomes. They create more entrances to serve a growing population. Large and numerous burrows openings and soil mounds are hard on equipment and can make mechanical harvesting especially difficult. The burrows can also lead to the diversion of irrigation water and have been known to cause severe damage to levees and other retention systems. There are different types of traps that can be used for ground squirrel management. To name a few, there's the conover, box trap, and live squirrel trap. Conover traps does not require pre-baiting. This trap is placed directly into the burrow opening, which the squirrel must pass through the conover jaws. The jaws spread four, four and a half by four and a half inches, so it may be necessary to fill in the space between the trap and the bur burrow entrance with soil to prevent the ground squirrel from slipping past the trap. Multiple traps can be used on multiple entrances to the same burrow system. If traps are not placed in all burrow openings, the remaining entrance may need to be filled and blocked to divert animal source traps. Some trappers find it useful to offset the trigger slightly to one side of the trap when left directly in the middle those ground squirrels may view this as an obstruction and prefer not to enter. Stake the trap to the ground to prevent scavengers from running off with their carcass in the trap. Now Dylan will show us a quick demonstration on how to set up a conor bear trap. So uh, we squared off this active squirrel hole. We found some sign that they've been active in this hole. So we squared it off that our conor bear trap fit right into the entrance of it. So to set it, you squeeze these two parts right here, and then pull this part together, and then you take this little three-pronged device and put it in between the trigger, and then from there, you lay it in the trap, nice and squared off. Take it to the ground so that nothing can take it away. That's how you set the con bear. Take it off so that no one uh, decides to stick their foot into it. Trapping is a practical method for dealing with ground squirrel infestations. If numbers are low to moderate, trapping is a good solution. Box or tunnel traps are an example and can be effective if the squirrel becomes accustomed to taking bait from the process of pre-baiting. Place traps near burrows and their runways. Use oats, barley, nuts, melons, or some other attractant for bait. Ensure that bait is secured and behind the trigger. Leave the traps unset for several days. Once squirrels become accustomed to the traps, set them. Because traps are unset on the ground, they can be hazard to non-target animals and children. A box with an entrance holes three to four inches in diameter can be set over the trap to reduce the risk. The squirrel live traps consist of wire cages that allow squirrels to come in with bait but the doors do not allow them to get out. 
This is great for management in areas where non-targets are present due to the ability to release them. But ground squirrels caught must be euthanized upon capture because it is illegal to transport ground squirrels from their place of capture. Euthanization can be done with carbon dioxide or by shooting with non-lead bullets. Baiting. There are many different toxins that can be set as bait for squirrels. This is another management tactic for ground squirrel control. Zinc phosphide is an example. This chemical compound is an acute toxin that is treated in grain and is usually lethal in windows within 48 hours. It can be applied as a broadcast or a spot treatment. It can be lethal in windows, but ground squirrels have developed a dislike to the smell of the treated grains resulting in bait shyness. The biggest concern with the use of zinc phosphide is the accessibility of non-target individuals. There is also anticoagulant baits that are first generation, meaning it takes multiple feedings to become toxic. These are more commonly used for baiting due to its protection for non-targets. Difasanone and chlorofasanone are examples of some. The sale price for difasanone is $42.99 for 5 pounds. These two are commonly placed in bait stations due to their toxicity to non-targets. It takes multiple feedings for the bait to actually kill the ground squirrel. The more consumed, the higher the toxicity. So be sure to dispose of any carcass after management to decrease the chance of secondary poisoning. Fumigation is also another management tactic for ground squirrels. The best time to fumigate is when ground squirrels are active and when the soil is moist. Dry soil can cause the gas to escape, thus reducing effectiveness and increasing risk to yourself and non-target individuals. Do not fumigate near buildings or under structures because there's flammability issues associated with it. Aluminum phosphide is the most commonly used fumigant. It is a toxic gas that accumulates in the soil and kills ground squirrels in their burrows. Fumigants can be retrieved from the local county ag commissioner or can be commercially bought as gas cartridges. It is recommended to go through training to ensure user safety and effectiveness. Typically, the gas cartridges are placed in the squirrel burrows and the burrows are covered so that gas does not escape and it must accumulate in the burrow. Burrow exploding devices are also included in ground squirrel management. A device, for example, is the redentinator. It works by being inserted into an opening and it allows gas and oxygen to accumulate and it explodes while injuring squirrels in the burrows by concussive force. They are not effective at destroying burrowing systems due to burrow sizes being very large and widespread. The key to squirrel management is to ensure that populations are below the carrying capacity level and management tactics are used for prevention of expansive resurgence, all while being economically efficient. For example, the Contra Costa County of Agriculture compared live trapping the treated squirrel bait specifically for ground squirrel management in California. For the area provided, it was estimated that live trapping cost a total of $7,311.85 per linear mile, whereas bait treatment with dipacinone cost a total of $220.40 per linear mile. It was determined that bait treatments were not only the cheaper option, but they provided a desirable level of control. This shows that desirable control can be achieved with the right management tactics and the right management price. Farmers do not always want to spend more money on management than they make, so it's important to always consider economic loss. For ground squirrel management, for ground squirrel management, remember that keeping populations below the carrying capacity reduces economic loss. Time and effort put into maintaining ground squirrels should be centered around preventative measures during times where there's lower populations, all while considering economic impacts and economic thresholds.